National Lampoon's Animal House, released in 1978, is a classic comedy that doesn't pull any punches. Packed with humor, shockers, and even a touch of sadness, this film takes you on a wild ride through the absurdities of college life. Ever wondered if there are lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? As you watch, brace yourself for the unexpected and stay tuned for some funny, shocking, and even a bit of the summer. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this movie? Or are there any lesser known facts that intrigue you? Keep your eyes peeled because we've got a few surprises in store for you. Now we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Drop your stories and memories in the comments below. We're eager to read your tales from the Animal House era. Get ready for a trip down memory lane, and remember, there's more to discover about National Lampoon's Animal House. Stay tuned for the unexpected. National Lampoon's Animal House, released in 1978, left an enduring mark on the landscape of American comedy. Directed by John Landis, the film was an irreverent take on college life, following a misfit fraternity's antics at Faber College. During its time, the movie was met with both critical acclaim and box office success. Its impact on popular culture was undeniable, reshaping the comedy genre and influencing subsequent generations of filmmakers. The film's reception was a testament to its groundbreaking approach, embracing a raw and raucous humor that resonated with audiences. The memorable characters, led by John Belushi's iconic portrayal of Bluto Blutarski, became cultural touchstones. Animal House's unapologetic humor and satirical take on authority figures struck a chord with viewers, earning it a place in the pantheon of classic comedies. Animal House's success extended beyond the silver screen, giving rise to a myriad of spin-offs, including a short-lived TV series in 1979. While the show failed to replicate the film's triumph, it showcased the enduring popularity of the Animal House universe. The film's characters, quotes, and scenarios became ingrained in the public consciousness, leading to the creation of merchandise ranging from t-shirts to posters. The impact of Animal House on the college comedy genre was profound, influencing subsequent films and TV shows exploring the humor in campus life. Its legacy can be seen in the DNA of later projects like Old School and American Pie, which owe a debt to Animal House's fearless approach to comedy. In addition to its cultural impact, Animal House's success marked a pivotal moment for the National Lampoon brand, establishing it as a force in American comedy. The film's irreverence and boundary-pushing style set the tone for future Lampoon projects, contributing to the brand's enduring reputation for edgy and subversive comedy. In conclusion, National Lampoon's Animal House remains a seminal work in the realm of American comedy, with a lasting impact on both film and popular culture. Its unbridled humor, unforgettable characters, and influence on subsequent works make it a cornerstone of cinematic comedy, shaping the landscape for years to come. The band Otis Day and the Knights, featured in the movie, had the then-unknown blues guitarist Robert Cray as its bass player. Cray played a crucial role in assembling the musicians for the band. Originally, Jack Webb and Kim Novick were considered for the roles of Dean and Mrs. Wormer in the film. However, the final casting took a different direction. Chris Miller, one of the writers, drew inspiration from his own experiences for some characters. Pinto, for instance, was based on Miller's time as a Dartmouth sophomore, where Pinto was his fraternity nickname. Boone, another character, was envisioned as an older and wiser version of Miller himself. The character of Dean Warmer was crafted with inspiration from Richard Nixon. Additionally, the character Flounder's nickname was Borrow Wood from a wealthy individual in Tulsa, although the film's Flounder differs significantly. The character Bluto was a composite, drawing from several individuals in Miller's fraternity, particularly those nicknamed Albie, Seal, and Bags. These details offer insights into the casting choices and character origins in the movie. Each actor and character had a unique connection or inspiration that contributed to the creation of National Lampoon's Animal House. In the iconic 1978 film, there's a memorable scene where a stressed out character defiantly yells all is well. During the parade moment, now widely used as an internet meme to satirize stubborn refusal to accept facts in the face of a wrong-headed policy or a deteriorating situation. Originally clocking in at 2 hours and 55 minutes, the movie had its share of deleted scenes offering more insights into the character Bluto. One notable cut involved Bluto confronting a dishwasher who dared to challenge his voracious appetite. 
The confrontation ends with Bluto's emphatic declaration, you don't mess with the eagles unless you know how to fly. Another deleted scene extends the famous mustard episode, featuring Bluto pouring mustard on himself and breaking into a rendition of I Am the Mustard Man. Delving into the original script reveals an amusing twist in Flounder's admission to the fraternity. In an unfiltered moment, Flounder spills one of Larry Kroger's secrets revealing he's got spots on his weenie. This secret resurfaces during the fraternity's naming ceremony with the entire group drunkenly shouting because you got a spotted dong. These behind-the-scenes details add layers to the characters and moments that have become ingrained in popular culture. This peek behind the curtain sheds light on the creative decisions and additional content that could have shaped the film differently. Each revelation adds nuance to the characters and scenes, offering a deeper understanding of the movie's development and the choices made in crafting its humor and narrative. The fraternity and National Lampoon's Animal House undergoes a nomenclature shift, transitioning from Delta Chi Tau to Delta Tau Chi during a scene where movers clear out the frat house. This alteration adds a subtle touch to the film's narrative. Originally slated to film at the University of Missouri, the production faced a setback when the school's president declined permission after reading the script. Consequently, filming relocated to the University of Oregon in Eugene, where the iconic scenes unfolded. Remarkably, the movie's advertising and promotional efforts surpassed its production budget. More funds were allocated to marketing, highlighting the strategic push behind the film's widespread recognition. These behind-the-scenes facts offer glimpses into the film's evolution, from the dynamic fraternity name change to the logistical shift in filming locations. The financial emphasis on promotion also underscores the strategic approach to ensure the film's success. In summary, National Lampoon's Animal House reveals intriguing details, including the fraternity's evolving name, the shift in filming locations, and the unique emphasis on promotion. Jack Webb declined the role of Dean Wormer, expressing concerns about its impact on his image. The initial choices for Boone and Otter were Bill Murray and Chevy Chase, but director John Landis persuaded Chase to opt for another project. Tim Matheson took the role instead. During the film's 30th anniversary interviews, Karen Allen shared trivia about her nude scene. Reluctant at first, Donald Sutherland's willingness to bear his bottom influenced her decision. The behind-the-scenes dynamics, from casting choices to on-set negotiations, provide additional layers to the film's production. Each decision shaped the trajectory of the characters and scenes, contributing to the movie's unique identity. In the 1978 film, a memorable scene features the character played by John Belushi, revealing the dirty lyrics of the Kingsman's 1963 song Louie Louie. This moment traces back to a genuine FBI investigation prompted by complaints about hidden profanity in the song, but the agency eventually admitted to finding no obscene words. On the blackboard, there's a list of names with graduation years, including the character John Butarsky marked as 60, 61, 62, 63. This subtle detail adds depth to his character's history in the movie. A scripted but unfilmed bit involved a parade float featuring a bust of John F. Kennedy, with an exit wound resembling his 1963 assassination. The director decided to cut this scene, deeming its tone too offensive for the film's climax. These behind-the-scenes glimpses highlight the movie's connection to a real FBI investigation, nuanced character details on the blackboard, and the director's choice to exclude a potentially controversial gag. Each element contributes to the film's unique identity, offering viewers a deeper understanding of its creation. After dismissing the crew hairdresser, director John Landis took the core Delta actors to a local barber shop. There, he sought early 1960s-style haircuts for the cast. The barber, upon examining pictures, confidently claimed it would be an easy task. Subsequently, he efficiently cut all of the actors' hair, one after another. The scene where Otis Day and the Knights perform Shout has become a tradition at the University of Oregon home football games. After the third quarter, the clip graces the Autzen Stadium Jumbotron, prompting thousands of fans to sing along enthusiastically. Originally conceived as Laser Orgy Girls, a comedy about Charles Manson as a high school student, the idea for the film underwent transformation. Harold Ramis and Douglas Kenny, along with producer Maddie Simmons, shifted the setting to college and toned down the content. 
Ramis also drew inspiration from an earlier treatment titled Freshman Year based on his own college experiences. In summary, behind-the-scenes decisions, from hairstyling to iconic football game traditions and the film's conceptual evolution, offer a unique glimpse into the making of this classic movie.